So welcome everyone. My name is Kit Hadley. I'm the director of the St. Paul Public Library. And welcome to the Central Library. This is the flagship library in a system that is at the heart of St. Paul's Community Learning Network, where every library is an active center for neighborhood life and civic engagement. So for whom else would we name this library other than our George, <laughs> beloved George Latimer? So to give this an official start, I'm going to welcome the President of the City Council, the Chair of the Library Board, Kathy Lantry and Chris Tolbert. Good evening. Well, Mayor Latimer, and, and all night we have to say Mayor Latimer because otherwise there'll be some confusion, is um, George still can draw a crowd now, can't he? <laughs> and there are, there are times when an honor perfectly fits its recipient, and today is one of those examples. Because we're not going to make the mistake um, that many people do about having a program run too long, I want to share just one quick story. And this was told to me by someone who was actually there. Um, so I'm sure if it came from, from Mayor Latimer, it would have been way grander. Um, so, um, but it's grand enough for me. Uh, a few years ago, the Friends did a capital campaign to raise funds for Sunray and Highland libraries. And as part of going around to ask for donations, they went to a local corporate bigwig, is how I'll describe him. and. Um, George and this gentleman probably had very little in common, except in George's inimitable way, they bonded over the love of reading and the love of libraries. They really had very little in common, except, as you might imagine, George walked out with a check. <laughs> and, um, and my residents at Sunray Library will be grateful for that endowment because that's where the next mayors and the next CEOs for local companies are going to come from. And like so many things that George has done, he has turned his passion into action. And so tonight we are having a very grand gesture for a gr very grand man, and I am thrilled to be part of it. Thank you. My name is Chris Tolbert, and I'm uh, the chair of the St. Paul Public Library Board, and it's an honor to be here today. Um, I first want to recognize my fellow board members, uh, board member Lantry, Board Member Bostrom, Board Member Brenmoan, Board Member Tao, Board Member Stark, um, and Board Member Thune, if you guys will raise your hands. They help make this possible. When St. Paul families see the bronze of Mayor Latimer's plaques coming through the front door, their grandparents may tell them how a labor lawyer became a bolt of energy as mayor of this great city. Their parents might tell them that he served as a federal official, as a McAllister professor, or as the chair of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Libraries. But it's possible that only a few will tell about his greatest accomplishment in a life full of public service. His greatest work walks through this library every day. It's the third grader that has received the greatest gift from a powerful public figure, the ability to read. Many people don't know that for a decade, George Latimer joined with the equally remarkable Don Frazier, his mayoral partner from Minneapolis, and two other grandpas, John Davis and Jerry Christensen, my grandfather, to make reading by third grade a state goal. They did their own work. No foundation, no grants, no staff. Just the self-described four old grandpas and a will and know-how how to do good for future generations. And they succeeded. Today, reading by the third grade is the official goal 
of education authorities everywhere, the editorial boards, foundations, and most elected officials. It is fitting that we name our central library after a person who did so much for future generations of students who would be better prepared for life, the world, for citizenship, because they learned to read by third grade. Mayor Latimer was a special mayor. He is a great citizen and father, but he was a spectacular grandpa who passed the torch to a new generation of readers and leaders. Mayor Latimer, on behalf of all the future generations that will come through this library, thank you for all you did to make this city and this state a better place for everybody. Now, now it's my honor to uh, to present a, a video on Mayor Latimer, a short video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, from my point of view, I'd say Dad was um, very tolerant. <laughs> I mean, you know, with a, mo both my mom and my dad. I mean, with a house full of teenagers. We're a very close family. Mm -hmm. um, four of the five of us live very close to where he now lives, still lives in our family home. As we like to say, George is a big deal. Uh, all you have to do is ask him. Uh, in all seriousness, though, George has had such an impact on not only the, the labor community, uh, particularly the building trades community, uh, but he really has become a very, very big part of my life. Uh, and I am so blessed and fortunate that he's allowed that to happen. He was a man with tremendous vision for the city. Tremendous vision uh, for the growth of the city and all of the various things that the initiatives and the development that they took on. And I think, my, my, don't I live in a wonderful city. What is it like to follow a great mayor? And my answer's been the same for over 20 years. Uh, it's much better to follow a great mayor than a mayor that isn't so good. He makes people smile, he make, made people want to do things. He made people feel good about themselves and he made people feel good about, about the city. And I'm sure other people have talked about his devotion to Nancy particularly uh, during her illness and how difficult that was for everybody. It was a remarkable duo, and we spent years and years together arguing. George always being out in the front with his point of view, Nancy quietly in the background until she gave the ultimate wisdom that carried the day. He's a charmer, and we love him dearly. It's a humbling feeling to think that that building that's been there so long and will be there so long, and I think one of the most beautiful squares or parks anywhere in the United States or elsewhere, it's really humbling to think that will be named after our dad. Yeah. He loves books. Uh, he loves the ability to learn and to gain knowledge, and there isn't a building in town uh, that's more appropriate to have George Latimer's name on. One of the most uh, important things that we can teach to teach our children is that quiet time of sitting down and reading. Certainly a tribute of naming um, a library is, is fitting for a great mayor who I was happy to follow. I can't think of anything more wonderful and exciting to, than to have something named after George Latimer, who, as I said, cares so deeply about new ideas and discovering wisdom of the past. I think it is a perfect selection. Rice Park is named after somebody. I mean, I, I can't understand any objection to naming the Central Library the George Latimer Library. I think it's a great idea.
it is a great idea. I wonder whose it was. <laughs> um, actually, people, people know that um, Mayor Coleman and I have a lot of similar things. We both grew up in St. Paul. We've only both ever lived in St. Paul. Um, we were born just days apart. Chris's dad was the Speaker of the Minnesota House. My mom, Marilyn Lantry, who's here today, was a state senator. Um, and we have all sorts of disagreements, too, which I'll enumerate later. No. <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. But the one thing that I know that we share over and over and over again is a very deep admiration and reverence um, for Mayor Latimer. So without further ado, Mayor Coleman. Thank you, Kathy, so much. It, uh, it really is just an amazing honor to be here on this occasion as we celebrate the grand opening of the Green Line Central Corridor. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's Saturday's speech. I want to thank a few folks that are here and, and just welcome them and, and honor them for their help uh, in, in, in uh, putting together kind of an idea of how we could honor uh, a man who has meant so many things to so many people in this community uh, and so many people in this room. Uh, I want to first recognize and uh, thank former mayor and uh, former chief judge Larry Cohn who's with us and his wife Kathy. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, ambassador, and I can't remember, was, was it Sylvia or Sam that was the ambassador? Uh, uh, Cap, the, the Kaplans are here, and uh, I want to thank them so much for, for their long-term support and friendship. Uh, the Latimer family, uh, I don't know how many of you are here, but I know that there's a, a gaggle of you, and uh, I, I just think it's, uh, it's uh, incredible thing uh, to know that you are part of a, a legacy. Uh, and you, you kind of don't recognize it on a daily basis, uh, you know, because he's dad. Uh, and dads mostly embarrass their children and tell bad jokes and uh, uh, never give you as much money as you wish they would give you. And, uh, and yet when you go out into the community, uh, as I found uh, with uh, having been fortunate to be the son of, of Nick Coleman, uh, it, is, it always touches you when people uh, acknowledge uh, who you came from. And so uh, I wish your mom was here with us this, uh, this evening, um, but uh, it is just wonderful to have the Latimer family here. Uh, I, know, I know uh, Peter and Ann Hegard, uh, who were helpful in, in kind of thinking through this, wish they were here. They're not able to be with us today, but they send their best. Oh, oh, there. I was told that you weren't going to be here, so well, Peter's not here. <laughs> Anne wishes to thank you, <laughs> and Peter, so to the Hegards. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's often thought that uh, one should wait 10 years after the passing of an individual before we start naming uh, grand buildings after them or, or other things. Uh, and uh, I think in many instances that's true, because in the light of history, uh, one is truly judged by, uh, their greatness is truly judged, uh, with a little perspective. Uh, but fortunately, George has been politically dead for over 20 years now. <laughs> Which I think has given us a sufficient passage of time to truly have his deeds uh, be attested to. And I don't think under any measure, whether we wait 10 more years, or 10 times 10 years, or 1,000 years, that there can be any question about the impact that George Latimer had on this community. I had the great fortune one night, uh, actually I've had the great fortune many nights to have beers and drinks at the St. Paul Hotel with George. Uh, but I recall one in particular, where on a nice spring evening we walked out of the hotel. Do I, I see Mary Pat Scheibel, is Jim Scheibel here too? Yeah. Oh, I don't. Jim, sorry, Jim. I acknowledge Mayor, former Mayor Jim Scheibel. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wasn't ignoring us. But we stood outside the front of the St. Paul Hotel, uh, and George was just putting. I had been uh, recently elected mayor, 
and had a chance to kind of just get my feet wet and a little understanding of, of what this job was all about. And George just simply said, what you get to do when you are mayor is a pretty amazing thing. And he said, look around this square, which for my money is the most beautiful urban square in America. And but for a lot of folks that had the understanding of the meaning of this square and what it could be as a central gathering spot for our community, uh, it may not be here. Had it been uh, the Landmark Center been allowed to be torn down, uh, had the St. Paul Hotel allowed to remain closed, had the Ordway not been built, and had this facility not been kept up, not been nourished with a lot of love, and not understood the essential role that it plays in the city of St. Paul. And in every one of those instances, even if George didn't have a direct role, he'll claim one. <laughs> and he, but that's what mayors get to do. But the fact of the matter is, it was much of George's vision. It was much of George's understanding of what a rich community can be and the understanding of what a library can be to that community in the teaching of our children, in the reaching out a helping hand to a recently arrived immigrant family, to a person unemployed and struggling to find a job that can provide for his family. All of those things and much more happen at this library and every library across the city of St. Paul. And so we take this action to name the Central Library after George Latimer, not lightly, but fully understanding what George has meant to this community. Fully understanding that he is deserving to have a grand building like this named after him. Fully understanding that it is a fitting honor to recognize George Latimer in this fashion. Look around this room. Think about the collective wisdom in this room. Think about the collective shaping forces for the city of St. Paul in this room. Like a mighty, mighty glacier, all of you have carved the landscape of the city of St. Paul. But at the head of that glacier for 16 years and beyond was George Latimer, shaping this community, moving this community forward, leaving his wake in his path. George has meant so much to so many, and he is deserving of this honor. Some people think that the reason I'm naming this building after George is because the building immediate next, immediately next door is named after J.J. Hill, and I needed to find another short, bald guy <laughs> to name this side of the building after. And while it's true, that was somewhat of my inspiration. <laughs> that is not the reason why we're here. <clears throat> On the way here, I was thinking about a little bit of Georgia's history and growing up in a community not unlike the city of St. Paul, the blue collar community of Schenectady, New York. And as a young man, George Latimer was a Shabbat's Goy. Did I say that right, Sam? No. What did I say? <laughs> How was I supposed to say that? Shabbos Goy. Shabbos Goy. My, my grandfather Abraham Levinson is rolling over as we speak. Shabbos Goy. I should have pulled out this piece of paper. You actually had it phonetically for me and I ruined it. Shabbos Goy. And Shabbos Goy is uh, uh, in that role. George would go to the homes of Jews observing the Sabbath and he would light their lights for them. And I thought, what a profound way to start a life, to light the light for others. And in many ways, that has been the rest of George's life. He has lit our light in the city of St. Paul. He has lit the light in libraries across this community. He has lit the future for many, many families, many, many people who may not in the future know his name other than the fact that it is on the front of this library, but they will know that name. And we in this room owe it to future generations to continue to tell the story of what George has meant to this community. 
I am so honored and so pleased to be able to officially name the Central Library the George Latimer Library. And I give you George Latimer. The mayor is now in his second term, and what happens is mayors in their second term forget that the person they're honoring is supposed to give a better and longer speech than they did. Um, I was going to begin with a, a very irreverent remark, but I've been trampled on enough. Uh, but before I do that, there is no elected official in my entire life I've admired more than a quiet man standing next to his not very quiet wife, and I want to honor them, Don Frazier and Arvon Frazier. That's as much applause as anyone from Minneapolis has ever received in this building. Enough is enough. Uh, well, everyone either named Latimer or married to Latimer or would like to be Latimer, please raise your hand so we can fully identify you, including, including my big brother, Bill Latimer, from Schenectady. Thank you. And the irreverent remark I've forgotten, so. Um, it's true, I love books, and I love libraries, and I love librarians. But most of the people in this room, or at least some of them, certainly Mayor Coleman remembers, that really, uh, I didn't know what the plaque was going to be attached to, but the fact is that as much as I love books, I have spent much, many more hours in bars than I have <laughs> in libraries. But a lot of that time was spent, a lot of that time was spent arguing about books. So I'll, 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 I'll slip that in there. Unlike all of my predecessors, I will be brief. Uh, Kathy Lantry, each one of them has already hit the keynote that moves me most profoundly and which makes Kit Hadley such a great head of libraries, and Peter Pearson, the great head of the Friends of Libraries. And, and that is this, that a library is not a building simply sitting there with books in it, but it rather it offers hope to young people and the opportunity to wonder and to wander through history and to think about what their life could be and to read about what the lives of others might be, to understand how the world works and what it's made of. Libraries serve that purpose and it serves a purpose for the newest of Americans to know they can come here and they can get an entree into the engagement in our whole society as many of us have been blessed to be. And finally, it's a great place for us old people to find comfort in old books, and I love it. And if you insist, uh, if you insist, Kit, on throwing in computers and all the other electronics, <laughs> that's fine. But please leave the books there as well. <laughs> the last thing I want to say is that I was profoundly moved, uh, and I was silenced, in fact. Uh, I was so moved when the mayor uh, told me uh, of this. Uh, but I should tell you that uh, you, all being here, 
So many of you I've not seen in many years. Some of you I see every week. But it, that has touched my very soul to see you all here. And Kathy Lantry, who should know better, said a very dumb thing to me. <laughs> she said, it should have been a bigger room, not for any politics I ever know. <laughs> it's just the right size. Thank you all very much. speaker represents our best friends. Help me welcome Tanya Bell, the head of the board of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. Well, all I can say is, wow, what a room. Um, first of all, two years ago I was asked by Mr. Swain um, and this gentleman over here to follow him as the chair of the Friends of the, board, uh, the, Friends of the St. Paul Library, and I shook. Now I get to follow him to the podium, which is not fair twice. So I am Tanya Bell. I am the current board chair of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. And I've had the honor to follow this fine gentleman in this role. Tonight I get to tell you that the Friends will be honoring George in two ways. One already happened when the Friends of the, Bo Friends of the St. Paul Library board voted to rename an important book endowment for George. Now the George Latimer Endowment at the St. Paul Foundation. The second way, that's appropriate. <laughs> the second way we would like to honor George is with the creation of a new fund that will support summer learning for all children in St. Paul. Because we believe, as George believes, the children's academic abilities slip during the summer months without a quality out of school learning program. The library has filled this need for many years. The Friends is asking all of you and many others to support this newly created fund through a fundraising effort that the Friends will conduct over the next several months. We're thrilled to partner with Harry Melander, who you saw on the video screen, the president of the Minnesota State Building and Construction Trades Council, who has pledged to support this fundraising effort through his contacts at the Building and Construction Trade Council. In addition, you may hear about a special event hosted by Sam and Sylvia Kaplan later on this year, which will also honor George's long legacy of civic engagement in St. Paul. I ask you, the Friends asks you, St. Paul asks you, the children ask you, that we hope you will take that card and an envelope, that you'll participate in this special fundraising effort. The Friends is pleased and honored to do this for George Latimer, who has been such a great part of our organization for the past 15 years and is now our first ever board chair emeritus for life. So we love you, George. Thank you. So thanks for coming, everyone. Good night. <laughs>